Good day, dear colleagues. I hope you can hear me well. Well, first of all, I would like to thank for the possibility to take part in that interesting uh, section with uh, uh, most interesting discussions and uh, extraordinary data, which is not always uh, quite knowledgeable. Uh, to me, and I would like to talk about the Epstein Barr virus markers, which are going to be used or are used to diagnose and monitor uh, patients with uh, mm, uh, 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 ABV associated pathologies, in particular nasopharyngeal cancer patients. Among all cancer patients in the world, you do know that about 20% are related to infection related or associated tumors, and in this group, we can see such oncogenic viruses, papilloma, uh, HHPV virus, uh, hepatitis BC, but here we will talk about uh, ABV uh, virus. And uh, the uh, common uh, cancerogenesis mechanism in tum uh, tumor cell transformation uh, are related to the following induction of genetic instability, stimulation of cell proliferation, uh, mm, apoptosis uh, uh, illusion, uh, and also evasion, immune system evasion. And uh, I would like to uh, briefly talk about uh, a couple of words about the uh, ABV virus to remind you about the main uh, key points. Uh, ABV virus infects about 95% of the whole uh, population globally. Uh, people are infected at the early age, uh, asymptomatically. A virus enters the body through the uh, Valder uh, ring, and we are all actually carriers. But the virus is, uh, replication is strongly uh, controlled by the immune system. The main uh, reservoir of the virus is a, a small belymphocyte fraction. And once uh, uh, this uh, ABV virus was discovered, we started to understand that it's able to participate in cell transformation and thus in development of tumor processes in the body. And starting from that day on, we've accumulated quite clear proofs of the logical role of HBV. They mainly are shown here, but in the main of them, are related to the high frequency of uh, ABV associated disorders in the so called endemic regions and also high uh, antibody titers to the virus and thus <coughs> high concentration of DNA virus in a uh, in, uh, patient uh, body. So, uh, HBV infection is initiated due to currently. Uh, due to the virus uh, link to uh, GP protein uh, 250-220 to uh, CD21 uh, receptor, which actually in B cells, which are uh, targeted by uh, ABV. And expression of CD21 uh, at uh, most of the surface of B cells and uh, to a less degree to uh, epithelial cells and some other cell lines, um, so to say, explains uh, tropism, virus tropism to these cells. And here we clearly know the mechanics of this process, structure, and participants. And in this case, I present one of the models created by our colleagues. And if we look schematically at this process, then we can see the normal B cells uh, uh, are infected by HPV through receptor uh, uh, cytosis, and uh, after the interaction of uh, uh, glycoprotein 250 and uh, C C21 virus, viral uh, and the cell membranes uh, the fuse, and the viral capsid enters cytoplasm. When epithelial cells are infected, which has on their surface uh, this receptor, CD21, the uh, cell enters, uh, uh, virus enters the cells through fusion of viral membrane with cell membrane. And just after virus enters the cell, uh, HBV DNA exists in the bisomal form and is passed to daughter cells. Uh, in, in case of some uh, Burkitt lymphoma cells, it has been shown viral uh, in DNA integration into cell DNA, but we would, would not talk about that today. And also, as in case of other viruses, there are two ways uh, for the events to go. Uh, after infection, it's a uh, to uh, critical or latent uh, cellulitic uh, uh, cycle results in virus multiplication, replication, and release, which is not very good for the cell. So in most of the cases, a virus uh, remains uh, viable and uh, enters a latent phase. And, uh, uh, 
viral gene expression is controlled depending on uh, degree of uh, viral cell expression uh, and we know based on that there are uh, different types of latency of uh, ABV from 0 to 3 types the high latency type, the more of uh, viral genes are expressed, including viral oncogenes. And along with that, uh, some uh, HBV-associated malignancies has been shown clear connection to the specific latency type. For instance, uh, stomach cancer, in most of the cases, with expression with uh, uh, latency type 1, to meaning a very limited type of uh, genes are expressed. Uh, and uh, uh, nasopharyngeal cancer is a second latency type. And uh, we should mention that uh, all the viral gene expressions are sufficient to develop malignancies and uh, some additional factors are required from both environmental, so internal ones, and here they are shown. And those factors are mostly uh, described for endemic areas for those pathologies. And as you do know, when immune control is impaired, uh, the ABV virus uh, causes various pathologies, not only malignant but also uh, benign, meaning infectious mononucleosis and among malignancies. Uh, we can talk about uh, lymphoproliferative disorders and uh, epithelial forms of HBV associated disorders. But the most important specifics of uh, HBV associated malignancies, which I mentioned, is the concentration in several uh, uh, global, uh, several regions in so-called endemic areas. For instance, the pharyngeal cancer is mostly seen in uh, uh, Southeast Asia. Hodgkin lymphoma is mostly a Mediterranean uh, area, and so on and so forth. But the causes of such endemic areas, they today are not quite clear. We can just uh, make some assumptions, and uh, in this case, we shouldn't exclude effect of all uh, influence of various factors of both circulation of uh, highly oncogenic, uh, highly pathogenic strains uh, in these regions, and also genetic predisposition of the population in these areas, and also the susceptibility, as I showed in previous slides, to influence of uh, various uh, harmful environmental factors. But the more of a uh, more of an issue is the development of those uh, uh, viruses in non-endemic regions, for instance in Russia. If you look at the virus structure, we can see that it has about, uh, ABV virus has, uh, genome has about 90 genes, and they're all divided into so-called pre-early, early and late genes. Uh, and previously, quite interesting study was published analyzing genetic changes and accumulation of somatic mutations using, uh, it, is, it was done on 12 uh, cell lines of HPV, uh, ABV associated uh, nasopharyngeal cancer and they found the whole activation of the whole range of signal cascades and transformation factors related to genome instability in tumor cells uh, uh, infected with ABV and uh, existence of uh, various uh, types of infections latent and lytical one, uh, which I mentioned before, uh, determines the virus replication of viral genome and expression of the viral genes. So for instance, in the case of the latent infection type, when uh, it has been shown expression of at least 11 latent genes, two of them encodes uh, uh, small non-polar regulated DNA, and the transformant potential is uh, uh, controlled by the whole range of uh, core and membrane genes, which uh, strongly uh, contribute into the uh, transformational potential of the virus and its functional activity. And as main viral oncogenes, we consider latent membrane uh, proteins, which are responsible for uh, uh, cell malignization, uh, transformation, they activate cell proliferation, its ability to meta uh, to metastatic uh, development, and even uh, in some cases they could affect uh, treatment resistance. And also I would like to say that quite recently uh, there appeared a range of publications on detection of the uh, features of tumor exosomes. So in this case tumor exosomes for are formed are formed by as of original cancer cells, it's uh, HPV-associated 
nasopharyngeal cancers. They carry different types of genetic material, including the viral origin, uh, including the main viral oncogene, uh, LMP1, and uh, some microRNA. These exosomes might bring to adjusted cells or into blood uh, they are components and it might result in uh, viral infection uh, maintenance or infecting of surrounding cells and also it affects immune control um, and along with that tumorogenic role of those uh, such exosomes in case of uh, uh, ABV-associated nasopharyngeal uh, cancer has been proven, and since they, since they carry lots of specific molecules, uh, pathogenic molecules, they are considered as potentially diagnostic and prognostic markers for such tumors. And it has been uh, suggested to use detection of exosomal LMP1, for instance, in uh, uh, blood serum or uh, saliva uh, to detect uh, uh, to virus and uh, detect the somal uh, 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 microRNA and DNA uh, as a marker for uh, nasopharyngeal virus infection. We do it and we work on that in our laboratory, but the problem is to, uh, I mean, there are, so to say, technical issues in uh, obtaining of the, such uh, um, exosomes and development of those exosomes in large amounts for sensitivity analysis. And if we take a look at the latent membrane uh, proteins and the main oncogen of uh, ABV virus, and uh, consider its uh, consider our ability to use this protein as a marker, then according to published data in HPV uh, uh, associated disease uh, uh, endemic organs in tumor cells, we mostly see highly thermogenic variants of LMP1, uh, which are considered as a MET plus MET minus, but in Russia. Uh, LMP1 was found to be, in most of the cases, as a low divergent form with an uh, insignificant number of mutations, three to four, versus the prototype variant, and so it means with a non-significant transforming activity. Among amino acid substitutions we've detected in that protein, the uh, substitutions are located mostly in C-terminal. Uh, that protein in this area is responsible for transforming activity of LMP1 and uh, uh, tumorogenic uh, properties of uh, tumorogenic properties of uh, ABV virus. So we uh, did uh, functional analysis of such mutant variants of LMP1, mostly seen in uh, in patients with various mutations in uh, C terminal region. Using retrovirus vectors, we obtained cell lines which uh, continuously expressed LMP1 uh, variant we studied. And we showed that such variants of oncogenic are able to transform tumor cells. Of course, in, we did this uh, work in vitro. And they're able to produce uh, a transformation foci. They form cell colonies and also uh, changes of signal pathways were shown and the changes of expression of uh, uh, LMP variants uh, that we studied. Also, I would like to develop on the humoral response. It is well known that majority of uh, nasopharyngeal cancer patients, unlike uh, tumors non associated with AB virus, show uh, higher humoral titers of antibodies to against uh, HBV. Uh, they are elevated uh, much long before uh, the, this, this, the cancer is diagnosed. Uh, NG, uh, IgG, IgA antibodies are detected, and detection of those antibodies. Uh, could be used uh, to, for screening in endemic regions. So we started to use it as well in our works, in our studies, and clinical guidelines. Uh, and uh, the study of ours showed that the frequency of detection of uh, IgG antibodies uh, uh, in plasma uh, uh, in, in patients uh, reaches 100%. And basing on the, the uh, uh, ratios of IgG and IgA antibodies in our lab, we developed, and for many years we use uh, the, so to say, decision rule for differential diagnosis of uh, nasopharyngeal uh, cancer on the basis of antibody titers. So the positive uh, value of those ratios shows the ABV associated form of nasopharyngeal cancer, while negative ratio shows uh, uh, non-HBV associated uh, cancer. And uh, despite 
positive response or positive experience of use uh, serological viral markers, uh, we should say that antiviral immune response has shown uh, now inertia with regard to the tumor development dynamics. That's why lately we use uh, testing of blood plasma for presence of nucleic acids related to the tumor. And as a method for early cancer diagnosis, uh, early cancer detection and, and tumor process monitoring and uh, uh, Mm, uh, and other factors, uh, quant quantification of uh, DNA corpus is considered to be the most useful monitoring technique and uh, uh, for the residual tumor, I mean. So, I mean, uh, tumors uh, hidden or uh, tumors after uh, chemotherapy or radiochemotherapy uh, and, for, and to, to uh, forecast treatment effectiveness. And that's why, along with the termination of uh, anti-HBV antibody titers, we also test for uh, HBV DNA testing in, in uh, plasma of such patients. And in, in, in this case, at this slide, you can see competitive analysis of serological and virus markers of ABV virus in uh, nasopharyngeal cancer patients with different tumor size and uh, different disease stages, but uh, we haven't found any statistically significant differences. While in the group of nasopharyngeal cancer with high titers of GIG antibodies to uh, capsid uh, viral antigen, we find high levels of uh, uh, RNA uh, burn. While in the group of patients with low ABV uh, virus, DNA concentration was much lower versus the uh, previous group, uh, versus the control. So differences between those parameters, viral load in patient arms uh, with virus titers of virus specific antibodies was statistically significant. So we can talk about a kind of a, a rule or relationship we found. Similar correlation was seen in the groups of patients with different antibodies or VG antibodies to uh, capsid uh, um, antigens. A uh, different uh, pattern was seen when compared to human response in uh, patient in uh, nasopharyngeal cancer patients uh, with uh, different uh, viral load in plasma in patients with uh, DNA concentration uh, above 10,000 and below 500 copies per uh, one mil. Uh, uh, difference between antibody titers were found to be statistically insignificant. Maybe it's related to ins uh, to not sufficient uh, uh, sampling of uh, our uh, participants. This slide results of the simultaneous uh, studies of PAMIS, patients with primary nasopharyngeal diagnosis on uh, content of very specific antibodies and viral uh, DNA concentration before and after uh, therapy. And we can see that high antibody titers, in this case 96 uh, patients were taken to the, for the study. So prior to treatment, in 44 of them, uh, these uh, titers, uh, titers decreased statistically significantly, and uh, and similar decrease uh, of titers after treatment is found also for IgA and NGA antibodies. Uh, the uh, um, uh, media, uh, viral concentration uh, mediana uh, after the treatment uh, also considerably decreased, but due to high values of uh, circulating DNA. In some patients, we didn't detect uh, positive response on treatment, meaning viral DNA remained quite high, viral DNA concentration, but, but in groups of patients with other tumors, uh, with other uh, oral cavity tumors, not related to ABV, and in blood donors, whom we used as a control arm, we've detected low humoral response to HPV, uh, ABV, and uh, background uh, numbers of uh, viral DNA. And in order to see if those markers are, so to say, uh, useful for various uh, settings, titers of uh, HBV-specific antibodies and uh, numbers or figures of the viral concentration in uh, nasopharyngeal cancer patients in remission and in the vasectomy, we so compared those groups. Uh, and we see that IgG, IgA antibodies in uh, patients in remission and relapse were, uh, were similarly high, but the differences uh, between them were not statistically significant, significant not statistically significant. And if we look at the viral DNA, we can see it quite clearly. Uh, viral DNA in the same patients, uh, in case of remission or relapse, was considerably different. Uh, and this difference was statistically significant. And this data showed 
uh, high clinical uh, value of viral DNA and its ability to reflect, so to say, various uh, processes in uh, patients, in HPV infected patients, and they also help to diagnose remission or relapse. And viral antibodies, uh, HPV specific antibodies, didn't provide uh, us with such an uh, opportunity. Next two slides show individual response. It's a slide. You see uh, antibody uh, dynamic titer and viral load dynamic uh, in patients with uh, non-spherical cancer patients with positive response to treatment. In all the cases, we see decreased uh, uh, titers and decrease uh, antibody titers, decrease uh, uh, viral load. Uh, while here, uh, so we need to finish. We need to finish. The time is up. Yes, yes, I'm coming to an end. So we can clearly see. Um, possibilities for clinical use of those two markers. If we consider individual parameters and, so to say, statistical uh, numbers. So generally speaking, as a conclusion, I would like to mention that the study of ours indicated that these biological markers, uh, antibody titers and uh, viral DNA uh, titers could be used an effective, as an effective uh, tool to specify diagnosis and uh, they could be used for prognosis, but they do not, uh, so to say, cancel, do not negate the use of other means, and they could not replace endoscopy uh, on esophageal imaging with CT or MRI, which currently, of course, is used as a golden standard, golden diagnostic standard for relapses and metastasis of nasopharyngeal cancers. Here, I would like to acknowledge the participants of my work and would like to thank you for your attention.